In today's video, we are gonna go over how you can use spin tax or spin syntax for your cold email campaigns, whether you're sending on instantly or smart lead. This is gonna help you bulletproof your email deliverability by randomizing your sending patterns and get you better results, more leads, more calls, more revenue. It's a win-win. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to my business partner and our COO at Done Free Meetings as well as Grow B2B, Felipe. Felipe, take it away. Thanks for the introduction, Michael. As always, in today's video, we are going to talk about a bit more of an advanced technique called spin syntax. I'll tell you all about it, what it is, how to use it, why to use it in the first place. But before I start on that, I want to start talking about cold email. A little bit more about like cold outbound overall that I think will be important for you to know before we talk about spin syntax in the first place. So when it comes to cold outbound, our number one goal as people that are sending outbound is to land in the primary inbox. Because if we don't land in primary inbox, we land in spam, a lot of our efforts will be wasted. Not completely, because there is a level of you sending emails to spam at a certain scale that will still make it work. There are some people that look through their spam folder. Now, nowadays, some tools such as Microsoft, they're even sending your emails to black boxes. So you don't even land in spam. So to define the, the, the ground here, like number one rule, like ground zero of the whole thing is, let's land in a primary inbox, okay? So let's avoid the spam, let's not talk about what it will look like if you're just blasting everyone and spraying and praying. Let's talk about actually getting to the inbox. If we wanna talk about getting to the inbox, we first gotta understand what makes us land in spam. And to understand that, we gotta define what is spam in the first place, how it is actually defined. And the way that Google, Microsoft, and other blacklists even define spam is by two things that have to be true at once. Number one, and I did not expect this effect to come out on my camera. Uh, thanks, Mac, for that. So number one is actually that you have to be sending emails in bulk. Number two that has to be true at the same time is that those emails have to be unsolicited. So what is the difference of email marketing and cold email? It is a solicitation, right? People have required to hear from you if you're sending email marketing. They have never required to hear from you if you're sending cold email. And so we have to be mindful of that. Now, we cannot break both of the definitions because we are still sending unsolicited uh, emails out. So we can break the first definition, which is the bulk definition. Now, if you're in the cold email space for a while, you already know some of the ways that we do that. There is one technique called snowshoeing, which is you buy a bunch of burner domains, burner email accounts, and you send very low volume from every single email account. So all of a sudden, it doesn't look like you're sending emails in bulk because every account is sending very low volume. Then there is the detail of you adding like warm-up emails to that so the reputation is faked and it looks like you have uh, a good reputation when you're just using a warm-up tool in the first place. I'm not going to explain too much about the warm-up thing, but in case you're advanced, you understood what I meant. Now let's talk exactly about the book sending. So you create a bunch of email accounts, each of them sends low volume, and that's how you got, kind of get around the definition of spam and you, you have a better chance on landing the primary inbox. The problem with that is that was a, that was a concept like 10 years ago already. So Google and Microsoft got some time to, to catch up to what we've been doing in the cold email space, right? So they realized if people are gonna be creating multiple email accounts to be sending this at low volume, we're not gonna catch all of their accounts because even if we do catch them, they're just gonna delete them and create new ones. So what they decided to do is flag you on a copy level. So they will check if your copywriting is getting sent out is getting flagged, is getting reported as spam. They will trust their users to judge whether or not your copy is good or bad. Now what happens is if a lot of users report you as a spammer, then your copy gets flagged, it gets a pin, even to the level that your signatures get a pin, which it's very like minute, but it is something that happens. And so you gotta be very mindful that that is a thing and you have to find your ways around it. One of the ways around it is what we're gonna talk about today, spin syntax. It's changing every single email that we send to make every single one of those look unique. And that's what I'm gonna teach you in this video. How do we make every email that we send look unique? So spin syntax, telling you what it is now, it is the technique or the code that you implement inside your code email sending tools to make every email sent out look unique at scale. Now, one of the ways you could do this without using spin syntax is just sending personalized emails. So if you have the time to personalize your messaging, maybe you watched our previous video on Clay on how to generate personalized lines at scale, you might not need as much spin, spin syntax because your emails will look somewhat unique already with personalized lines. But let's say you're sending emails in bulk, you don't have the time to do personalization, or you're like me, that you like having one campaign sending in bulk at all times and one sending personalized at all times, always having both. Best of both worlds is the best mix. So 
In that case, you want to be sending your emails that you will not be adding personalized line uh, on with spin syntax. So spin syntax would be a trick that you apply to change words within a script. So for example, it would take a, a sentence that would be, hey, Felipe, good morning. And it would turn into, hey, hi, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Felipe. And then the second part, let's say good morning, it would say good evening, good afternoon, and so forth. It would rotate between the words that it is sending, all, all automatically done. So that is what the spin syntax is. Before I tell you more about it, how to implement it, and how to start using it overall, I will tell you why it is important and what has been the data behind all of this that we noticed, which made us use spin syntax a lot more. So I'll actually draw something right here on the screen. Let's say I draw this right here. This is something we have noticed across the board, okay? So this has been through all of our clients. We've been sending cold demon for a very long time at a very high scale. And we have noticed this pattern. There is a correlation of uniqueness of email, meaning how different every single email that you send is from one another, correlated directly with the reply rate percentage, okay, over time. So over time, we noticed that the more uniqueness we had, the highest our reply rate was. And it kind of looked like this right? So yes, there are diminishing returns to the whole thing. I would not tell you that there is a diminishing return if you do this whole thing. There is, but in the very beginning of a campaign, right? So like when you send your first 1000 prospects, the amount of uniqueness of the emails matters so much. In fact, it is the one thing that will keep your copy sending long term if you have good accounts, if you have all of the other fundamentals in place. You, if you're sending cold emails already, you may have at some point come across a campaign that started really well, it had really good results, and all of a sudden it started dying slowly. And you're like, how come? It was working before and now it doesn't work anymore. What happened? What might have happened is that your copy got flagged. There could be other reasons for that. We could talk about in, a, in another video about campaign optimization. But to the point here, it could have been that your copy just got flagged. And so how do you get around it? You need to increase the amount of uniqueness that there is in your email. So how do we do that? I will show you. I'll open a document and I'll show you how to implement it inside a tool. So let's say my script was, hey, first name, like this, right? And then I would say, thanks, Felipe, for, okay? That would be like my email, okay? I assume I had like copy in the middle, I had the body in there, but whatnot. But assume like I was sending this, right? How could I add uniqueness to this whole thing? I could add a code such as this one, that look at what it would do. It will now trigger a response, depending on the Codemo tool that you're using, to choose one of the three words every time I'm sending. But what happens is, when I apply this to enough places in the script, look at this. I'll show you something really cool. Oops, that was a big typo. There we go. So let's say I take this and I put it on a rotation tool. So for instance, we could be using spin, which is a tool that just allows you to see what your spin text looks like and it calculates it for you. Just those variations right here generated 27 different emails that I can send out. So it tells you that the more you add this, the more uniqueness you have in your whole campaign. But it is exponential because the next time I'm going to add something like that, I'll just put something random in here. Look at that. It jumped from 27 to 81. I add one more of these spin texts right here in my copy. Let me say uh, I copied this one and I add it again. Look at that. Now it jumped to 243. Applied one more time. Now it's 729. There are so many combinations of this email that could be created and that your tool could send out to make them look unique. Now, the rule is the words that you're swapping around, they have to be synonyms and they have to sound good overall the whole script. So if you're adding like, hey, hi, hello, hello isn't necessarily something I would use in an email, so that I wouldn't be adding. But I would be saying like, good morning, for example, that would sound a lot better. So I just want to make sure that all of the variations I create look good in the overall script. They don't, we don't sacrifice quality for quantity just to make sure that our emails are unique. We want to have the best of both worlds. A lot of uniqueness, but also with a lot of quality. So this is how I add spin syntax. Now, this spin, spin, spin syntax, sorry, right here would only work in a tool called smartlead.ai, which if you're curious about how to use smartlead for you on your Kodimo campaigns, we have a video on that in this channel. You can actually check it out. The link is going to be in the description. So when I would go about creating a campaign in smartlead, which is a tool that allows me to send cold emails at scale, I would just paste it in the sequence. And from here, the tool will already be able to take over and generate spin text for me, right? So in this case, look at this. The preview is already one of the variations only. It doesn't say, hey, hi, hello. It only said, hey, right? So if you look at here, now let me generate the preview again and let's see what happens. I didn't add leads to this campaign, so apparently I cannot keep on swapping. But every email I'm going to send is going to be one 
combination of all of the spin syntax right here, right? So how do you create it? You have to go to the guidelines and the documentation of your sending tool, and you have to check in there what is the type of code that you need to add in order to generate spin syntax. So for instance, if we were going over to Instantly, another tool that we love and we use a lot, um, it would be a little bit different, right? So if I were to apply this in here and click preview, it wouldn't work because the way you create it here is like this. You have to put a random tag in the beginning and double uh, braces. So let's apply that to the whole script and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. So let's say I apply it like this. Okay. All right, I actually put a mistake in there. Let me just delete this real quick. And let's close the braces with double braces again. This should be okay now. Okay, now I click on preview and now it works, you see? So now it worked, it worked perfectly. Also first name would be spelled like this if you're using instantly. So that is how I create spin syntax in these platforms. Now, how much spin syntax should you have in the first place? That is something I wanted to remind you with this graph. As much as you can without losing quality. Bare minimum is one piece of spin syntax per paragraph on your script. So if you have five paragraphs, you have five pieces of spin syntax in your script. You have to swap some words and some sentences. Now there is an advanced mode to this, which is when you're swapping whole scripts as well with spin syntax. That's when you take it to the next level. When we were, we had a client that we were contacting 30,000 new people a day for, and for this person, we were sending 27 variations of every single email script, all full of spin syntax everywhere, and we were able to Scout us to the moon. We ran it for months and months and months and months without deliverability issues. So that is one example. But the way that we accomplish that is with spin syntax and having all of the other fundamentals in place. So that is what spin syntax is. This is how you check how much spin syntax you have using this tool here, spin.me. This is how you implement it in small lead and instantly, right? So those are the formats that you want to be using. And now what should you do from here? Should you go ahead and, and swap every single word in your script yourself? Perhaps, if you have the time, but if you don't, you should be using AI to generate the spin syntax for you. So you could use a tool such as ChatGPT 4.0, please use the 4 variation because it's way better with language than other versions of GPT, and you could have it generate spin syntax for you. So for example, generate spin, actually called email, spin syntax for the following email, the structure is, and then let's use instantly, is random sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, and then we run it. Um, and then let me take a script. Let's take this right here. Let's see if it's gonna do it with this already. All right, so this is not the best prompt, right? This is just a prompt I came up with on the spot, but you see, it will already create this for you. It will create all of the spin tags. It created way, like, way more variations. Now do notice that it did create a script all of a sudden that was not there in the first place. And that is bad, of course, because it would be changing your copy. So you need to get quite tidy with your prompts. You need to do it a lot better if you wanna use AI to do it for you, but you could use AI. And in fact, our students in Grow B2B, our course, where we teach everyone how to scale cold email the right way, and we teach everyone how to do it, um, in there we give away our prompts that we use in our own company. We never do spin text ourselves. We never touch spin text. It's all done automatically. We have one automation that runs it. And it does require better prompting than this, but I just wanted to open your mind to the idea of using AI to generate spin syntax for you. Now, if you're curious about our course uh, where we're talking depth about the strategies and how you scale cold emails to the moon, pretty much, you can check out the link in the description if you're down for that. In terms of spin syntax, this is the way to do it. This is why it's important and how to do it. If you have any questions about it, please drop it in the comments. I'd love to tell you more about it. And that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I'll pass the word back to Michael. Thanks for that breakdown, Felipe. It was very helpful. And if you do have any questions on spin tax, leave them in the comments. And if you want our prompt to have AI do this for you, well, it's in Grow B2B, our program, which is also linked in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.